Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, shalom, chabarim, shalom. This is Yad in here. This is Ras Ayadonis Tafara, L-O-J. The Lion of Judah Society of His Majesty here. We the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. Rastafari Jews, Rastafari Israelites right here. L-O-J-S dot O-R-G. But here, let's just touch on this. Did um, Tazariak of the ISUPK, did he, did he lie? And... I point this out, this is something that I thought that Black Jesus Minister BJM on the Sadneta platform would catch. A little something that Isha Shali, the I and I wife, wifey had was playing and I was listening to it and it was like very, very interesting and everything like that. It was basically um, one of the ISUPK teachers, I think like a second in command, um, after General Yohanna, who is the leader of that particular, you could say, group of Israelites right there. Um, I think it's Mahayman, Mahayman, he was talking about what uh, Chris Rock should do, the whole Chris Rock and um, Will Smith situation where Will had, think, you know, one has smacked the other and, you know, that embarrassment and, and something about uh, committing adultery and um, rape, crack cocaine and all of this kind of stuff was just kind of all mixed up together. But what BJM, Black Jesus Minister, alleges is that... Um, ISUPK is teaching lies and in some cases we have found them to be inaccurate you know concerning you know we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah as well as the Ethiopian Hebrews the royal order and especially the king Messiah conquering line of the tribe of Judah Haile Selassie the first king of kings of Ethiopia elect of God now on those levels which is very very important but we'll address that when it's time to address that but here I caught something that I just want to share with the family. Um, I was going to take an audible, like get an audible of the parts where, where to Zariak. It's in, it's in the video. Hopefully we'll get the video. I think it's BJM does ISUPK, um, something about teach, something about adultery, rape, crack cocaine. Do they, you know, is this what they're promoting? So for so on, that's what Black Jesus Minister, you know, he's making his case. He's making this case. And he did, you know, show and highlight certain things that a one name um, Mahayman had said, you know, regarding his advice to, um, I think, Chris Rock, what he should do vis-a-vis Will Smith. Now, just with that right there, without going over, you know, those details, one can get the details and like kind of play by play, blow by blow on the side net of video if it stays up there. Hopefully it does stay up there, but definitely have to get an audible clip of the areas where um, Tazariak, when he comes in, he basically says that um, he quotes the area where David, after David had went into um, Bat Sheba, after David had went into Bath uh, Sheba, Uriah's wife, you know, and after he had caused Uriah, basically he basically murdered him, at least through the through his um, kingly, you know, chief general office, because David basically no longer went out to battle so much with the troops, you know, and he still kind of commanded, you know, from the palace, you know, in Zion, so forth and so on. And so he basically sets up Uriah, you know, a faithful soldier, Hittite, just want to point out that he was a Hittite. Now, people say, well, does that, does that matter? Well, that's like in kind of defending at least what's defensible with David. Some things are not defensible, what David did, it, the adultery, you know, on first part, right? And then the murder, you know, you know, and then taking his wife to his wife until the prophet Nathan came to David and told David that what he had done, you know, was raw, right? Now, this is the part that General um, not General, but uh, Captain Tazaria. This is the part that he came in and he basically quoted. And now when he quoted this particular scripture, we thought it was interesting because he, he quoted it pretty accurately, you know, but then some, he was going back and forth a little bit. At least he was like kind of poking at, you know, BJM, Black Jesus Minister, who was supposed to, you know, just be listening. And then he'll come back with his rebut or his response to whatever Captain Tazaria had said. Right now, why is this important? This is important about truth. But first of all, I think that it's very interesting what Black Jesus Minister brought up concerning um, Mahayman, who is the thing second in command to the ISUPK, Israeli School, Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge. You know, you could say main, you know, main leader. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
Yeah. So what's the question here? The question is whether Captain Tazariak, whether he lied and whether this, it seems to point to a bigger point that the ISUPK, certain of the Israelites, you know, my father's house has many mansions. If it was not so, well, he would not have told us, told I and I. So here we're looking at, we're going to look at this particular area of scripture, right? He says that David's wives, right, were never so-called raped or never given over to another man or enemy. First, he was talking enemy, enemy. And I said, Where, where's enemy in the scripture? Right. In this particular quote right here. So here's the quote that um, Captain Cesaria had went to. Definitely had to get the audio. Right. But it went by pretty fast. Just listen to it. Still playing in the background and everything like that. But we said, let's just get to work on this right here and share this and have ones weigh in for themselves. If they choose to check out the videos on the side of the platform over there, they can get a full of full. I think it's labeled BJM. So ISUPK is in the title and they have adultery, rape and crack cocaine, crack cocaine. Yes, crack cocaine is all a part of this, you know, part of this drama right here. Now, not to get to the parts that uh, Black Jesus Minister was seeking to prosecute, but this is the part where we heard Captain Cesariak, who sometimes is on point, but sometimes is a, there's an off point. And this is one of those off points, though he might not admit it, and also heal up to um, Captain uh, Azania, Captain of uh, what, 10,000, Captain Azania, who was on a, another platform where, you know, f from from sabbath to sabbath you know it was on the same platform back and forth with certain things you know it was interesting it's very interesting i give thanks for that right there and also to um ross lawrence davis but and that's called if ones want to check it out it's out there i think on the anchor fm platform it's um um um, um, was it, what do you know about God and his chosen people? I think that was a, that a working title that we was calling that particular, um, radio show, AKA podcast. But here's the quote that Captain Tazariak went to second Samuel 12, 11, right? The main part of it, thus saith Yahuwah, thus saith the Lord, right? Jehovah, behold, I will rise up evil against thee out of thine own house and I will take thy wife wives and there's a big emphasis on the wives take note fellow habarim right we're going to point this out why like it when you're listening to ones presenting and you pick up on certain things or certain things are able to be picked up on pick up on it pick it up right i will take thy wives he emphasized wives right before thine eyes and give them to thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives, thy wives lie, lay sexually. And they were using the F, you know, the F, F thy wives, you know, up thy wives, right? In the sight, in the sight of the sun, right? Now, to read this full of full, you're going to deal with this, address this one point right here, verse 12, right? 12, 12, 2 Samuel 12, 12, 4. Thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. Now, Captain Tazariak, and this must be based on ISUPK um, teaching, Captain Tazariak said, right, and it seems to be their main point that this never happened, right? And if you hear the audio, and I'm sure if he's asked about this again, he probably will say the same thing, that no, this never happened because David had repented. And after David had repented, it's like we would say, like, all was forgiven, you know, and, but wait, others of us know that, well, David was punished. How was David punished for what he had done did, right? How was David punished? So what are these words? These words here are the words of Nathan. Like if you go to the, the fuller context right here, you know, you can go right over here, right? And it says, and Nathan said to David. Right, thou art the man. When David, he gave him a kind of a, a parabolic, like a for example story that sounded like, you know, something that really happened, but we learned that this was like a power, a, a parable, so to speak, that led to the um, bringing out of the judgment, you know, of the judgment against David, right? As David kind of weighed in on this particular, 
you know, this particular, we could say this particular parable, as he weighed in on this, we get to learn that, well, this is basically an example of what, you know, what David had done did. So here at this particular point of the scripture where it says that Nathan says, thou art the man. Because he gave a story about, oh, there was a man, you know, and he owned this. He's a rich man, but then he has a neighbor that comes to him and how he takes this poor man's ewe lamb, so forth and so on. You know, it's very, very interesting, those details there. would love to, you know, ride on all of this, but it's just important right here to just bring out as best as we can this question. Because when Captain Tazarek said that this was this never happened and it seems as though he's trying to say well did this ever happen he said that what the prophet nathan saying is going to happen because david passes judgment on that particular man right he passes judgment on that particular man you know he says something about how the man should be um let's go back here right david says david's anger was greatly kindled against the man Right. Then we find after that, Nathan saying, but you are the man. So you're angry. You know, ain't that something we angry at something? We hear something and we think it's like the other guy. But actually, it comes out to be us. We find out that really we're angry with the other man, but actually the other man. Right. That we're angry with. You know, what I mean, in other words, it's a way of it's a way of pointing out the importance of being able to see ourselves. You know, like once we say, like, see ourselves as we really, you know, as we really are, you know. So David, he hears this case and he passes this judgment. This is what's so interesting. He hears this this case and he passes this judgment. And he says what well, he says right here. He says uh, he said to Nathan, um, hi, Yahweh, hi, hi. You know, hi, Yahweh, right? He says, he says, as Jehovah, right? As Jehovah liveth, you know, as the Almighty liveth, right? As he who be who he be liveth, right? So here is where David, and hearing this story, it's as though he's hearing a story, you know, of like, you know, like, so what's been going on? The king asks, What's been going on? And when the king asks, like, what's been going on? The, the, the chief prophet says, well, okay, here's what's been going on, you know, within the area. Such and such and such and such word. Well, well, well based on, on, on what you said about that case, right, this is how that should be dealt with, you know. And then based on such and such a case, this is what should be dealt with that, you know. So this is, this is actually what's going on he's passing judgment and he's giving judgment you know against another i think just that in and of itself right is is a very you know is is a very interesting you know is a very interesting um you know point of view right there give me yeah pause yes 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 okay no something's going on in the background technologically wise had to just work that out so yeah, so David says the man that have done this thing shall surely die because that is the punishment, even according to Hard Torah, right, for such an adultery. When David heard this, this is how he interpreted that this man committed adultery. You know, you know, um, well, actually what's interesting is if you read it one way, the man stole, the man stole, right? But then, you know, the, it's like it's put in a parabolic language because it's still saying the man's wife, talk about the man's little ewe lamb, right? This one that was like a daughter to him and a traveler was coming. Instead of taking one from his own herd, he took one from this man's, you know, the poor man's thing. And he got angry because, you know, David was very much about, you know, you know, like, like he himself was poor. You could say, you know, in the more natural sense, he came from a poor background. Now he's the king of Israel. 
and everything. He had the great estate and people were fighting against him, rich ones, the ones who had power and influence and position and everything were fighting against him. So at first it wasn't like adultery, if you notice. At first it was like theft, right? In fact, one can even call it a more of a simple theft. Mm -hmm. There's a simple theft right here. If you just look at it on the surface of it, we already know the background of who's studying the scriptures. We already know the background of what's really going on, what's being expressed here. And then David says, after he says that the man shall, that have done this shall die, then he says he shall restore the lamb fourfold. My question here is, you know, Dawid, Hamelech, when you said that, were you saying that if the man dies because he has stolen something, even though in Torah, notice in Torah, there is no punishment for stealing that is death unless the act is being like committed, like a man goes into a man's house, you know, like like at night or something like that. Mm -hmm. Somebody be breaking up in your house at night. Right? You don't know who it is or what it's about. And you kill the person. You're not to have any guilt or blood for that because the person had forfeited their own blood, their own life for doing something like that. You know what I mean? There are certain cases, right? right? And they bring out things that were already going on, but where Yahweh through Moshe... You know, you know, signed off on those things. But and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. So David seemed to be judging this man as being like a pitiless man, a man that has no pity. Right? And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohe Yisrael, I anointed the king. Notice is anointed, the anointment, ointment, that's Moshiach. That's the Moshia sense. That's so how we bring out this word. We have mashach, mashach, right? Mashach is the verb, right? Not the noun, right? Moshiach, right? The anointed. Notice it's also painted, anointed, right? So painting the icons is important. I anointed thee king over Yisrael, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Shaul, right? And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives. And notice the word wives, the nashim, right, isha in the singular sense, and nashim in the plural sense basically means woman, right, basically means woman. Woman depends on the relationship. Woman in another relationship is a wife. That brings out that sense. Woman in another relationship is a wife, right? And it goes on right here, you know, or the feminine, also in the sense it's used as the feminist, feminine, feminine, Right, as opposed to the masculine, like the female, as opposed to the male, right? In another sense of the language, but it's wives, woman, thy masters, wives, woman, right? Thy, thy Adon, right? Wives, woman, to thy bosom, and gave thee the bite, Yisrael, and of Yehuda, and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given to thee such and such things. If that was too little, and he says, now, this is all the oracle of Yahuwah, right, of Jehovah coming through, right, and being articulated through the prophet, right, the prophet Natan, right, the prophet Nathan, right. So some might say, well, it's just the prophet. No, it's that oracle, it's that word, right, of Yahuwah, right, through the prophet Nathan. So it's Jehovah speaking, wherefore that hast thou despised the commandment of Yahuwah. Now all this is being spoken to Dawid HaMelech. Why have you despised the commandment of Yahuwah to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite. Now let's note this here that Uriah is not an Israelite, but Uriah is a Hittite. I put a question on the beamer right here. Is this one of the reasons why David might have looked at doing that different than if it was a Israelite, Israelite? Now, Uriah was an Israelite in the sense of one being nationalized. You know what I'm saying? Now, I mean, right? One's being nationalized. So, in a sense, there are two kinds of Israelite, those who are ethnic Israel from that seed of Israel. But then when we are a nation, Others become kind of citizens. So he's like kind of citizen, resident citizen kind of like, right? But not necessarily having the full rights of the land as the, 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 the seed Israelites do, right? So he killed Uriah the Hittite with a sword and has taken Ishto, Eshato, Oseto, his Isha, Eshet, his Oset, right? Wife, right? His wife. Notice the word for wife here in this verse here. You see it has the H02. 
is the same as wife here, right? His wife to be thy wife, his woman to be thy woman. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon, right? Therefore, here we come to the 10th verse. This is the key verse. Therefore, right? Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah, the woman of Uriah, as we see here, Esha in a singular sense, in a plural sense, Nashim, right? Right? Wife of Uriah the Hittite to be Ishteka, thy wife. Now here's the judgment verse. Thus saith Yahuwah. Now because so so it's like the judge reading the sentence and putting everything in order now. Right? He says, Behold, I will raise up evil. Right? Ra'a, ra'a, evil, hurt, bad things, unkind things, and happy things, misery. All that is bringing out the Hebrew sense of 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 evil. Because some people spook it out through counterfeit Christianity or other people's, you know, um, you know, idols, idolatry, and they don't see the true meaning of it. Injury, distress, you know, it has a male sense and a female sense, bad, evil, wrong, hurt, distress, right, sadness. All of that is the evil, he says, bring up evil against thee out of thine own bite house. And I will take thy wives. The word, you know what, nashecha, nashecha, right? In the scripts, nashecha, we could go to the Hebrew, but this is just an overview. Or nashim, right? In the, in, the, in the general sense, nashim, wives, which is a woman before thine eyes and give them to thy neighbor. I was hearing BJM, Black Jesus, minutes so my enemy, take it a while, give it to the enemy. And even Tazar got into a little bit, but I think he probably remembered that the verse didn't say, you know, enemies. And some of them have been picking up on some of the videos we've done over the years, so they might not admit it. But the good thing is, even if they if they just got it in the irate, in the spirit, right, in the ruach, as we have gotten it, it's good to pay attention to those details. It says, give them to thy neighbor, right? They didn't say enemy because it was talking about in a time of war and David got defeated in some war or something like that. And Tazariak rightly said, no, nah, that, that, that really didn't happen. But when he said that, David's wives were not given that never happened what was being prophesied here in 2 Samuel chapter 12. He was wrong about that. Now, when I zoomed in on the word, I said, zoomed in on the word wives. I've heard him emphasize that. I even said to Isha Shali, right? To I and I, Isha, I and I, woman. I said, Chan, you know, he's probably going to, you know, say there's a difference between wives and concubines. Because later on, as we go through the scriptures, Right? This is what we find right here. Later on, as we go through the scriptures, we have concubines. Let's go to look, this verse right here. Here it says in 2 Samuel 16, 22. Now, how many chapters away is that? We have 2 Samuel chapter 12, right? Now, here we're in 2 Samuel, still the second book of Samuel, chapter 16, about four chapters away, right? And they spread, right, Absalom a tent, Let's let's back this up. Let's back this up right here. Let's back this up right here. Right? Right? This is when Absalom rose up against his, his father David. Mm -hmm. Now Rastafari in Ethiopian Hebrew terms, we see this a little bit like the Aswawosin, right? That rebellion of Aswawosin. Right? Greater David, greater son. But here in verse 20 it says, Then said Absalom to Ahitophel. Right, give counsel among you what we shall do. They, this is a, a rebellion against David that's going on. That evil, that badness, that disagreeableness, that hurt, that injury rising out of his own bite, his own house, the bite David, the bite David, the house of David. Right, verse 21 says, And Achitophel said to Absalom, right, go into thy father's concubines. Now, ones will say, oh, it's concubines. Pelegesh, Pelegesh, right? Pelegesh is concubine and it's not wives, right? But note what the scriptures, we're going to go to see what the scriptures actually says when we're looking at the Hebrew, right? You know, when we're looking at the Hebrew, we have to go to the Hebrew Right to get the fuller fullness, the King James is like a kind of a stepping stone. We look up, we looked up concubine and sight and wives and sight. Right, so it's easy for others to search and find these key verses. Then you can read and study the fuller full and see if we are in error. 
right? Because we are not in error about this because we have proven to you with the evidence right here. The Zariach, and if this is part of their teaching or doctrine, that, well, David, this word that was pronounced by Nathan the prophet against David never happened, especially the part about his wives being taken and somebody else, he says, effing them, right, or ucking them, you know, um, one can say in, in other terms, rape or adultery, right, you know, well, you know, on that level, let's look at this. Here, Ahitophel said to Absalom, go into thy father's concubines. Now, the word pilegesh, pilegesh is a concubine, isha, in the singular is a wife, but in the plural sense, we have nashim, right, which also means wives, woman, right, which he had left to keep the house. Because when David left, he left with Bathsheba, Bathsheba, right, and Solomon, right, and others, but he left behind his ten concubines. David left behind his ten concubines. Now, ones will say, well, a concubine is not a wife. That's if you're in a Western Gentile frame of mind, right? Come out of, you know, let this mind, the Moshiach mind. If you look at now in the Hebrew and in the Judaic context, as Yeshua says, right? We know what we worship for salvations of the Yehudim, of the Jews, even of the lion of the tribe of Judah. So here, right, it says, which he had left to keep the house and all Israel shall hear, that thou hast abhorred, right, that thou art ab abhorred of thy father. Note, note the language. All Israel is going to hear what? Call Yisrael is going to hear how thou speaking to Absalom, Ahitophel, right, who became a conspirator and like a traitor to David. He betrayed David, but that's another point, right? It says, and then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. And then what it says in verse 22, it says, And they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom, Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Is this not what was said by Nathan, right? The Nathan the prophet, right? Nathan the prophet to, um, to Dawid, right? in the word, in the Hashem of Yahweh, of Yahweh, right? Is that not what was said, right? Now, the only point where I said zoom in, right? Zoom in on the word, right? Zoom in on the word wives, right? When I heard uh, Tazarek reading it, he seemed to emphasize that word and then even made the point that this never happened to David's wives, early on in the discourse between him and BJM, Black Jesus Minister. And the counsel of Ahitophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man inquired at the oracle of Elohim, of Hilehim, right? At the Debar, Debar. Debar is the word. In the beginning was the Debar, right? The word, right? And the word Debar became flesh and dwelt tabernacled amongst us, right? Here it's saying that Ahitophel, was a counselor, right? He was a wise man, studied in Torah, right? And if one went to him, it was like a man inquiring at the oracle. The oracle of Elohim is like going to the Ark of the Covenant, going from the Hebrew perspective, especially in the Old Covenant, going the closest one could get, right, to that presence, right? That presence of the Almighty, you know, like going right before the throne. Right, right to the footstool, so to speak. Right, so was all the counsel of Ahitophel, both with David, Dawid, right, because he was a counsel to David before, and with Absalom. It was like Ahitophel was like one of the elders now who was switching his loyalty from the father to the son, right, from the father to the son, right. And this is what he counseled. Notice what he counseled. Now, it's interesting because Ahitophel's counsel reminds me of some of the ISUPK counsel, both of Mahayman, right? The one named Mahayman who, who was doing the video that basically got um, BJM, you know, to, to come on Sarnetta and basically more or less put one and one on trial, you know, concerning. It was showing some, some historicals of Dawid. You know, of David, you know, you can see even that resemblance of the King of Kings, Kamal Hala Selassie there, right? David, David the King, right? David the King, right? David the King. Now, 
we can clearly see, right? We can clearly see right here. Let's bring this up right here again. We can clearly see that in sight of the sun. Notice that the word in the sight of the sun is direct word, but one might want to argue, right? One might want to argue concubines, right? Concubines. So let's just do this right here again. Let's go back to the first verse we showed you, the key verse, right? I think it's verse 11 right here. Let's look at the Hebrew for a moment. Right, let's look at the Hebrew for a moment. And we look at the Hebrew, right? Bring up the Hebrew. Let's go down here, right? To the Tanakh right here. Here it says, Kamar Yahuwah Hini Mekim Aleka Ra'a Mia Beteka We La Kachti Eta Nasheka. Na Et Nasheka. Right, he he will give. Right, he says, "I will give." Where lakachti, or some will say, modern Hebrew, vilakachti, 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 vilakachti eta nasheka, nasheka. You said word nasheka right there, the highlighted word. That's this word here for ones and ones, just to show and prove. You see, in the singular sense, it's isha. So nasheka come from isha. In the Hebrew, you have to study the Ben Yanin, right? Not the Ben Yamin, that's Benjamin, but Ben Yanin, the constructions. So here we have Isha, Isha, right, in the singular, but Nashim, right, in the plural, right? So Isha would be like a singular wife, like I say, Ishi, you know, you know, like, like Ishati, you know, Eshet, Esheti. Sometimes pointed as Esheti, could be pointed as Oseti, right? But then the plural is Nashim. Nashim, right? Wives. So in the construct right here that we just brought out right here, up here you see where it says, Vilakachti et nasheka. I will take, Lakach, Lakach, Vilakachti. I will take et nasheka, thy wife, right? Right? Le aineka, le aineka, like say, of your eyes or before your eyes. Ve natani. With Natani and our Natan will give le reika, le reika, le reika to thy neighbor. Notice they don't say the word enemy. In a war, you're going to lose your wives and be given to your enemy. But we do have the incident of Absalom, right? Of Absalom rising up against his father and his father going into an exile. Right? It says, vishakav, vishakav. Now, the other key word right here is to lay down, right? And in this context, to lay down sexually, vishakav, shakav, shakav, vishakab, shakab, imanasheka, and lay down, and like he will lay down, right, right, your, your, your neighbor, reeka, right, with nasheka, nasheka, nasheka is saying, wives of you male plural right wives of you male plural so this is the form in the possessive sense in the hebrew now we have nashim so we have nashe right nashe in a plural constructive sense and then in its kind of own sense just say wives or woman we say nashim so the word wife slash woman Le I nay, right, of your eyes, right, of the eyes of, of the eye, to say the eye, eyes, le I nay, le I nay, le I nay, ha shamash, shamash is the sun, right, hazot, hazot, right, before the eyes of the sun, the this, before the eyes of this sun, right, this sun, does that come out in, yeah, in the KJV, in the sight of this sun, the sun, the solar sun, right, so, People will say it was wives. We read the English, you think that well, this is wives and that's his concubines. Because you're deep ending on the English. But no, let's let's note this right here. Let's note this right here. Let's now go to concubines. Let's go to concubines and David, right? Concubines and David. Because we came across this too, and we was curious about this. Because we noted, you know, the difference in the King James version, right? In this area and over here and true it does say wives and right concubines but notice what it says it says and david took more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem because the con the difference between a concubine and a wife in the wife wife sense right is the relationship 
we have cases of ones who are a concubine, say initially, who become a wife afterward. This could have to do with having a child, a youth, and so forth and so on, you know, but it also could do with other aspects of the relationship, right? There's a whole lesson, and, and we can show in the scripture things that ones gloss over from an English Right, because they're not backing up their English with looking at the context of the sentence, not looking for you know fault or difference, but just looking at it and seeing the nuance, you know, seeing the details, the attention to the details. So here it says that David took more concubines, right? Two different words we have the word pil pilagesh, pilgesh, right? And we have Isha in the singular and Nashim in the plural. And he was come from Hebron, Hebron. And there were yet sons and daughters born to Dawi. Right? Now notice what it says right here. It says, And David came to his house at Jerusalem, and the king took the ten women, his concubines. Notice the ten women. Now the ten women is the ten Nashim. Right? Now these ten women, I want you to note these ten women in 2 Samuel chapter 20, verse 3. What does it say? Right, whom he had left to keep the house, he left them to keep the house back in chapters at chapter 16. Remember, chapter 16, when they spread a tent for Absalom, and when Ahitophel gave this counsel, and Ahitophel was someone who was almost like a Torah, a Bible teacher of great kind of authority. You see where it says that if anyone came to him to ask, it's like going to an oracle of Elohim. It's like going almost to the Ark of the Covenant. In other words, you can't get any better information on Torah than from this one here, and that's who Ahitophel was, and he was a council. Remember how it said that the king should keep like the Torah by them, so they had their own written Torah. Many of the righteous kings like Dawid and even like Shlomo, you know, like, but especially David, right? But then you see that they had others that could explain to them, like people who can explain to them, like the Ethiopian Jew, the Ethiopian black Hebrew, black Jew, you know, in, in, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, when Philip caught up with his chariot and he says, my friend, do you understand what you're reading? The Ethiopian said, you know, Jew, Yehudi, right, Israelite, right? He says, he says, come on up, you know, and let's reason. Let's reason on this. You know, how can I unless some man guide me in the King James, right? But notice it says right here, he took 10, took his, the 10 women concubines, the 10 wives who were concubines. There was a difference in their status, right? There was a difference in their status because there was a different relationship. If someone has a different relationship, it's obvious that they should have a different status. But they still was his wives, his woman. So this is the check verse in case ones want to say, oh, no, Tazarek didn't lie because over here it says wives. And over here it says concubines. Well, over there it says concubines. But then over here when we compare Second Samuel chapter 16, as we just showed you a little bit earlier, to Second Samuel chapter 20. Right, Second Samuel chapter 20, right, in Second Samuel chapter 20. So here, this is kind of very interesting right here, like, um, you know, we don't even know what a name for this would be, but we just wanted to respond to the point that we said, wow, you know, we can't let that one get by right there. Tazariak so says that, well, well, David, you know, David never lost any wives. Did David lose wives? Did King David lose wives? Am I is to Zarek and ISUPK are they you know and other Israelites I'm sure other Israelites probably have listened and said yeah that makes sense you know I don't know how far they have gone into this particular verse right but I'm sure they probably have and they probably have made a distinction between the concubines and wives but remember that the key word is woman and you see this word woman the 80 to the, the 802 the H802 because now when we go into the Hebrew of this verse, right, this, this verse right here, we can see this in the first part of the Hebrew of this verse, right? And we'll bring it out even in the English sense, right? Vayavo Dawid, right? Vayavo Dawid el Beito. And David went into his, his, his house, right? Um, Beito Yerushalayim, his house in Jerusalem or at Jerusalem, his house Jerusalem. Um, vayikah, vayikah, and he took, right, and he took, right, ha-melech, 
my the king and the king took her eta ash asha eta asher eta asher nashim now you see et asher right nashim that's the nashim the word before it asher or eser eser slika slika eser eser right eser we have the she and the se right so here we have eser right so here once again wayikaha meleka et eser nashim the ten, the Eser, ten, Nashim, right? Then it says, Pelagashim. You see, Pelagashim. So they were wives or women, the same word when it says Nashecha, thy wives, Nashecha. The difference is that Nashecha is like I'm speaking to a man, Nashecha, right? Thy woman. Then I'm talking about the woman, Nashim, right? And they were Pelag Pelagashim, Pelagashim. They were, were concubines, and when we now look into this down here, let's go to the word Nashim. Remember the word Nashim earlier? This is the same word we've been going to for woman and wife. You can see where it says woman and wife. Wife sense is relationship, relationship, right? Relational, that relational sense, right? It's a woman in what sense? It's a woman in the sense of it's, it's his wife, right? You know, you know, it's a woman in a sense of, right, a woman in the sense of their, his wives, right, his woman, same operative sense, but they're pilag, a pilag, a pilagesh, pilagesh. Now, what's the pilagesh? Let's go to the pilagesh right here. That's the next word, the H6370, pilagesh, pilagesh, where it has the yod, so it can have a glide or pel. Pelgesh, 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 right? And then he says concubine, a paramour. It's like a lover, a lover. It's still his woman. It's still his woman, right? And this is what the prophet said, right? It, it encompasses both senses, right? Using those words of Natan to Dawid was encompassing both senses, right? It could be, it could be either or and both, right? Right, whether it's you know, something like saying that, oh, you got my concubines, you can get my wives. But that that sense is senseless in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, whether it's a isha in a singular sense or nashim in a plural sense, is still the relationship. So if these women are just women on their own, right? So they're not women of any man per se, right? Or they could be a group of women and they have different king men, different different like husbands, in other words. You know what I'm saying? But in David's case, these 10 were all his. That's why it says this way it says. And he took them and, and what did he do with them? It says right here, whom he had left to keep the house. He left them to keep the house. They're the ones that his son Absalom, right, had, 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 um, what would you say? One might call it rape, right? You know, in that sense, you know, it's a, it's a rape. He forced sex, you know, and it wasn't just only about the sex, but it was about like what, what Ahitophel told him, right? To show that you are abhorred of your father because my father hates me. I'm going to go into your woman to show you this, what, hatred, right? But that's all what, what so-called grape rape is about. It's not a sexual act, as they say, but it's an act of power and subjugate. Now, the woman being used in this sense, right? And put them in ward, right? And fed them, but went not into them. Notice what it says, but went not into them. So he kept them. He could have just like thrown them out. Some men would be upset. How could you let my son do this? But you have to understand the whole situation. He left them behind even to spy. If you go deeper into the scripture, he left them behind to spy. So they were like woman lovers. Maybe women who were like kind of kept women. Maybe women through sometimes he did go into them. So forth and so on. But they were his woman in that sense. Right? They were his wives in the level of the Hebrew, Nashim, Nasheka. They belonged to David, right? They were still the Nasheka that Nathan said in the name of the Hashem, Hakadosh Baruchu Baruch Hashem. So it says, but he went not into them. So they were shut up to the day of their death, living in widowhood. Notice what it says, widowhood. They were living in widowhood. 
So they were his wives, but because he cut off the conjugal, we could say, relationship with them, right? And also with anyone else, if he had shut them up, you know, he had them under guard, but he fed them, clothed them, took care of them, right? All the way to their death, right? You know, in widowhood, right? And you can only have widowhood if you have some relationship that is considered within the society and the culture as a marriage, right? And this is what he had with them, right? So you have wives of different orders in that sense. You have like the throne wife. That's who, that's who Bat Sheba became because there were other wives of David before. So we have to put all this into perspective, but the point that we're saying here that, that Tazariak was incorrect with Right, was in him saying, you know, that that this never happened, that prophecy that we have in Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 11, right, because we have it happening, and then we have even the aftermath, right, the aftermath of this, you know, you know, the aftermath of this, right, look what it says right here, it says, sons of the concubine, of what order were they? You know, of what order in the relationship were they? And this perhaps is where where the Islamics may get like that four wives kind of a thing, because we look at even 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 um Ya'ik O Jacob, you know, his four wives, you know, and then because he even had those two others who were the handmaidens. Well, if we study the scripture, we see where they called handmaidens initially. And then, like, in the fulfillment summary, they become like the four wives of Israel that helped to build the nation of Israel, right? Because in a sense, the status of the woman, right, had to be brought up so the status of the sons would be brought up. That's where you see this interesting area where it says it was told David of what Rizpah, the daughter of Aya, the concubine of Saul, you know. And then it says over here, these were all the sons of David, right, besides the concubines and Tamar, their sister, right? So it's still listing, these were his concubines, but he basically put them away after his son had done did what he did right here, just to bring this out, to seal this up. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top, right, of the house, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Right, in the sight of all Israel. So Ahitophel told him to do that. Ahitophel, no doubt, was familiar with that prophecy. Right, and no doubt maybe sought that David should be punished for what he had done, did. Right, the prophet Nathan, Nathan already said this will be. But then we have Tazariak trying to relegate this into, like, maybe this is the ISUPK teaching to relegate this into some form of a. Um, like a, it's, it's a parable, it's like it's a moral narrative. It doesn't have force of a judgment, of a sentence, or even a prophetic judgment, because this is what it says right here. And notice the key phrase, right, is concerning, it was on the tent, right, a tent, right, but it's on the top of the house, and it was in the sight of all, the key word, it was in the sight of all Israel. Right, you know, of, of all Israel. Why? Right? Because it says in the next verse, for thou did it secretly, but I will do this thing, right? This thing, this thing before call Yisrael and before the sun. Right? And before the sun. This happened. That's why what we just showed you was David's reaction to that being happened. After he after he returned to Jerusalem, after he returned to the throne. You know, after he returned to the throne, right, he was able to, um, you know, like try to put things back in a more proper order after what his, uh, you know, sons, you know, had had done did. You know, well, have his son, Absalom, right? This is why you find Absalom being mentioned elsewhere. Just a point of order right here, here, here. So give thanks, brothers and sisters. So on that particular point, we know that Tazariak and if ISUPK is saying that this never happened and dismissing what we have in the 16th chapter of 2 Samuel, then we also put into the exhibit what we have in the 20th chapter and some of the key points because they lived in widowhood. Notice widowhood, right? Because that was David's way of divorcing 
right and not having any other relationship like an intimate relationship because that intimacy was defiled in the sight of all israel and the son by his son or in the scripture sense by his neighbor Re'eka, right and in the hebrew sense that can be used because Re'eka, you know from roe roe is like a shepherd one's fellow shepherd you know one fellow shepherd you know so that that has a whole context right within itself you know even in the hebrew you know um in in the hebrew sense in the hebraic the hebraics of his all especially the hebrew hieroglyphs and the heck hawk 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 heck right heck shouts and shepherd kings or this is who dawid david hamelech who he be so right here brothers and sisters some um some word picks here you know on dawid on david you know the great King David, you know, yeah, King David, right? Yes, 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 right? The Kush and the Kush, right? The Kush connection. They also try to deny the Kush connection. But I think this point is, um, this point right here is sufficient enough. So give thanks, brother and sister. Tell me what you think about it. Do you say also that prophecy did not come to pass, you know, concerning you know, David, right, and his wives, that it was just a, and, and then what, when he went down on his knees, that was the point that they said, when he went down on his knees and he prayed, you know, after the judgment came through, right, he prayed basically that his life, right, would not be taken from him, you know, that his life would not be taken because he knew what the crime was of, of adultery, even though his judgment, David's judgment of the parabolic man that 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 Nathan talked about seems to be out of order because is there such a a a find the Torah what Torah you know what Torah uh, law statute commandment is there what judgment is there for theft that a person be um, be 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 put to death a simple theft of like you stole somebody's sheep Right, if somebody stole somebody's sheep, right, that the person was very close to, it, you know, and served them up as food to somebody else, is the punishment death? Not according to Torah. We don't see that punishment being death according to Torah. So David, it's interesting that David's own conscience, conscience was coming out there. We see David's own conscience coming out, being brought out, you know, in his judgment. But then when he recognized that this thing was known, though he did it secretly. And the punishment for adultery, you know, as well as even for murder, right, right, would be death, right? This is when he went down and he beseeched. Let me just do this once again right here just before we get out of this particular subject matter right here because a teachable moment as well. Let's go to this part. Yeah, we're still in the same verse. And it says, and David said to Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. Notice he says he sinned against Jehovah. He didn't say he sinned against um, um, Bathsheba or Uriah or, or you no, know, he said against Yahuwah because he he he's recognizing ha Torah the directions instructions and Natan said to Dawid Yahuwah hath also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die because this the unspoken part is that when David judged this man who took a next man's sheep to be put to death and have and then after he's put to death he says and he shall restore the lamb fourfold how can he restore the lamb fourfold notice that what was done to David it speaks about even this judgment going down to his sons right and being manifest through his sons you know what I mean and he says right here he says um the child, that child that she had through the act, the direct act of adultery in the sense while the man was alive, so from that child would die. You know, we have that brought, brought out. Now, even the fourfold nature of David's judgment, David does get his judgment based on how he had judged his neighbor. That's how Nathan the prophet brought it to him. But the main point here is whether this 
had actually came to pass to Zariach, I actually BK, other Israelites say, no, this didn't come to pass. Nothing ever happened to David. It wasn't given over. His wives wasn't given over to enemy. It don't say enemy. That's the first strike right there. Next, when you say it doesn't say wives, we just prove that it does say wives. And the Hebrew context of wives and women is relationship. Show. It's relational, right? It's relational. Right, and he had left these ten concubines back there, and then uh, Absalom took them up to the roof. You know what I mean? Come on, now all that in the sight of all Israel. The scripture says this right here. You know, so these are just some of the proofs positive against some of the faulty biblical hermeneutics that some of our fellows, our brothers, you know, other Israelites, you know, sometimes do. Iron sharpen iron, right here. What do you think? Shalom, chavarim, shalom.